Everybody, welcome to Perspectives with Catherine Toon. And I have a very dear guest. It's been a little bit since Nicole Jansen has been in the Perspectives with Catherine Toon house. Anyway, I'm so happy. We were, we were having such a good time off camera. I was like, oh, let's go to lunch. Okay, oh, wait, wait, we need to do the, the interview. But anyway, <laughs> welcome, Nicole Jan- Jansen. It's so good to have you back, right? This is your second time. So, yeah, it's so great to be here, Catherine. And I just love what you're doing. And I'm excited for this conversation and what God's going to do and how he's going to use it to uh, to bless both of us, but also, of course, your audience. And uh, yeah. So and your audience. Because you and can my do audience, because I'm definitely going to be sharing it. So, yeah. Yes, that is so great. I we, We're going to talk about the creative power of our words, but I thought maybe I would read your bio a little bit in case people are like, okay, let me track with what you're about. So I'm going to do that. Uh, so... Uh, it says, as, as a strategic business mentor and leadership coach, Nicole Jansen has been empowering entrepreneurs and business leaders for over three zero years. That's amazing. Her extensive experience in business leadership, and I love this last one, human behavior, love that, has uniquely equipped her to bring out the best in other, others through her unique brand of coaching, which focuses on activating your God-given identity, purpose, and assignment and applying solid biblical principles for holistic success. She is the founder and host of the Leaders of Transformation podcast, a top 1.5%, of course it is, podcast globally, reaching leaders in over 140 countries. I'm so glad we're friends because otherwise I might be intimidated. This is fabulous. Anyway, I vote for all of this. This is amazing. You are doing so much and it is, it is just so great to see everything that's going on in, in your life. So um, thank you. Thank you. Thank well, you. It's, it's all God's by God's grace, because literally, I mean, you know that when I started this podcast, it was because God said, you're going to do a podcast. And I'm like, I do I want to do a podcast? I really that wasn't the question. It wasn't a, it wasn't a how do you, you know, how do you what do you think about this? It was right. do this and do this now. Wow. And so I, uh, I just was obedient, you know, and the the fact that he has taken it where it needs to go. I haven't, you know, I know some, you know, a lot of podcasters will push out a lot through marketing and promotional posts and all the things like as in paying for it. Mm -hmm. I was just like, Lord, if this is your will, Mm -hmm. then just send it where you need to send it. And so that's Mm -hmm. literally all been by God's grace. And so it's amazing. It's not necessarily, it's just, yeah, being obedient. It it is, and well, and it's amazing when we're obedient. Like there is such grace on it. There is such an and it's such yeah. an anointing and so powerful. And I yeah. love we were talking earlier because you would, the Lord had been highlighting to you that He really wanted you to really kind of uh, uh, focuses towards believers. You're not couching it in other language to and and if anyone else is doing that, that's great. But this has been a honing in. And I, I and and the the feeling with that is it just is going to give you such legs to run with because I see you just mm-hmm. running with Holy Spirit with it and that is yeah. amazing. So that is we love well, it's that been a process. I yeah. mean, you, I was kind of like smirking when you said thirty years because you're dating me, but that's all right. I mean, well, I'm 52. I've been doing this a long time, yeah, and yeah. you know, I had the privilege of being part of a family business that gave me that opportunity to be coaching and mentoring at a very young age and in personal development, literally since I was seven years old, reading and listening and going to seminars and all of that. And so, but it's been a process because even though I became a Christian at 14 and I got into business, I started my own official business at 16, it it was more of a secular business, right? So I was bringing who I am in, in Christ into it and even as I later on started coaching, I was really coaching entrepreneurs in general. Right. And, you know, and so the majority of them were non-believers mm-hmm. and or somewhere on the fringe. And, mm-hmm. you know, it, when I started the podcast, I asked, I was like, Lord, is this a, 
is this a Mm faith-based podcast? Mm -hmm. Is this like, what is this? And, um, I didn't get, I didn't get the release to, to make it like that. It was to have it be open. And it was just about, Mm -hmm. you know, interviewing difference makers and world changers and doing that. And so that's what, who are making a a difference in the world. And so that's what I did. The more I did it, I loved, I love doing it and continue to love doing it. We're over 500 episodes, but the more I did it, I was like, God, I, I want to share more of your truth. I want to share oh, more of what is behind the, you know, behind the success behind, like, where does the grace come from? Where does my faith, uh, you know, lie? Where does the wisdom, even people say, wow, you know, you can talk to anybody. And it's like, where does that come from? That's not because sure. Lots of life experience, you know, and, and success and failure and all that in between, but it's because of God's wisdom and yeah. studying his word yeah. that has really made, been the thing that's made the difference, you know? Yeah. And so I remember my husband and we can talk about that if you want, but my husband at one point, as um, we were in the process of getting divorced and he asked me, he said, you know, I hope you forgive me. And I said, Oh, I've, I've already forgiven you. And he said, right. wow, you're, you're so amazing. And I said, um, oh. no, let's be clear. If it were me, I'd strangle you right now, but God's <laughs> grace <laughs> Is, you know, and God's love is what you're feeling right now, mm-hmm. you know, and that's taken a lot to get to this point. Right. But it's, it's, it is all God's grace and it. God's love. Beautiful. And you talk about love, right? Mark by love. That's your book. It's like this, uh, this God's love is transforming. Yeah. It transforms us. And then as we share it with others, it is literally, and I've experienced right. it firsthand. It is transforming. It, it is so transforming. And the beautiful thing is we're really tracking with him in this way. It's transformation that happens almost as a byproduct out of this relationship and communion that yes. we're operating in. So we're not just trying to, we're obviously operating, we're, we're, we're partnering, but we're not trying to squeeze fruit out. It's, the fruit happens because we're in this healthy dynamic rooted in love yes. with Christ. So it's it's like the overflow. Last year, I did this um, connect group at our church, and we were really focusing on this idea of what does it mean to live from overflow, mm-hmm. right? Like, like God actually doesn't even desire for us, I believe, to be filled up, right? It's to live from overflow so that we have enough for others. Right. Because if all we do is go to from full to half full to full to right. half full, it's just basically serving our need, right? Exactly. But it's like when we live from overflow, he is right. all sufficient. He is, he, exactly. you know, can provide more than enough. When we operate from that in overflow of love, and it's like the wellspring of just mm-hmm. overflow, mm-hmm. then we have plenty to give to others. Absolutely. And I think there's so many of us who have, and I've been there, is living in that full is the goal, filled right. up is the goal. Right. And most of the time we're living in, half empty or right. maybe even right. three quarters or right. exactly. fully depleted. Exactly. And it's like, we're constantly in this, but that's, that's again, that's not his, that had not, is not his way. And even like over the last number of months, he keeps showing me scripture as I'm reading scripture, yeah. focusing on something else. Again, this word overflow keeps Absolutely. coming back. Yeah, it's my overflow. Goodness. Oh, this just makes me so happy. Absolutely. Cause the thing is we, the, the, the more he fills us up, and then the more we give, the more comes. This is this ongoing flow. And so this is why this healthy communion and this mode of operation and this relational dynamic uh, with God uh, keeps us in that place. And it's so supernatural, but it's seamless. And it is so supernatural that people are drawn. It almost, almost creates a, um, uh, well, th- this attraction, uh, if if you had like a pump, it would kind of suck people in for the lack, lack of better. So yeah. in that overflow, it draws people into the overflow. Yes. And this is where there is no lack. There's just abundance. There's super yes. abounding abundance. And so we're not squeaking to get by. We're not just just making it. That's a just make it God. Like Jesus actually completed something sweeping on that cross. So living from that place is is huge. Wow. Yeah. Well, that is amazing. Um, 
I'm just, I'm just pausing. Let me, let me just, okay. And w- I feel like there's a way with this uh, concept of overflow that has such life and zing on it to weave it in because we were going to talk about the creative power of speaking life over our circumstances and, yeah. and just all these different things, the, the creative power of what we speak, how we speak it. And I really see that in operation with this whole overflow because it's almost like the the prime, the pump primer, and then it just keeps the pump moving because we're flowing and we're speaking that that those streams of living water are just flowing out. And one of the ways they flow mm-hmm. out is in the creative power of our voice and what that that brings in our lives into the lives of others and then releases an atmosphere for other people to come feed off of or drink from or however you want to uh, term that. So, um Yeah, well, we're made in God's image, Mm -hmm. right? And God is a creator Mm -hmm. and he designed us to be creative. So we're not the creator. He is the creator God, but we are made in his image. And so we are creative. And I believe that entrepreneurs are, what do they do? They're creative. They make things. They come up with idea that, you know, the ideas. And I believe the the best ideas are God given ideas and those are the ones that He blesses and when it's my idea there is just I feel like I'm trying to skip skip yeah. skip you know right. and like yeah. pulling mm-hmm. teeth to to make it to make it happen versus when it's His idea it flows again like the podcast is a good example of that yeah. and so there is that there is that when you have that creative flow. I mean, just like him creating the world, right? He created the abundance. He created the world and everything in it mm-hmm. to, to feed, right? To, mm-hmm. to bless, to multiply. He said, go out, be fruitful and multiply. Mm-hmm. We're actually called to multiply. We're called yeah. to be fruitful. And so there is an abundance in that. Mm-hmm. And so whether it's ideas, whether it's, I mean, life and death is in the power of our time. And you know this, right? I mean, we're, I'm, you know, this is, this is your well-versed in this, in terms of really speaking life over yourself, speaking life over others. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that it's important for us to recognize that our words have creative power. Mm -hmm. Just Mm -hmm. like he spoke the world into existence, we speak our world into existence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We speak life over our relationships, our, uh, our health, our finances, We speak life over these things or we speak death. I love what Joel Osteen said once. He said, don't use your words to describe your situation. Use your words to transform your situation because we have the ability to do that. And I think so few of us realize that. And even those that do realize that sometimes we still forget. It's like, oh, I can't believe he's like, just something like this. And it's like, why am I saying is that everything that proceeds from my mouth, Mm -hmm. I really need to look at. Mm-hmm. Do I want that to grow? Do I exactly. want that to create and manifest? Exactly. If I do, great. But if not, right. then I need to choose some different words. I need to so change good. my focus, change mm-hmm. my words, mm-hmm. and change my state, my state of being, mm-hmm. right? And how I'm showing up. Because if I'm saying things and maybe maybe speaking death over something mm-hmm. and un- unhealthiness or toxic right. you know, language or whatever... It's probably because, you know, you know, it's because of, not probably, it's because I am operating from my soul. I'm operating from my ego. Mm-hmm. I'm not operating from a place of love. I'm not operating from a place of being in the presence of the Lord and honoring and, glo- and being a, a vessel for him, right? We are to be pure vessels yeah. for him to oh. flow through, his power to flow through us. And, and and the reason why it needs such purity is because it has such power. Yes. Because when it is used in an anti-love uh, a way, I'll say, uh, it is destructive. And so, yes. and and regardless, and this this applies whether you're a believer, whether you're an unbeliever, whether you're a believing believer, whether you're an unbelieving believer, it's irrelevant. This is the human condition as he yes. made us. As he made us, you know, yeah. one of the things that I, I gravity, wanted- gravity works. I was just going to say gravity works, whether you believe in it or not. It's, mm-hmm. it's just is. Yeah, it absolutely. That's exactly. It's, it's just how we are designed as human beings. So, and this requires for us to be aware 
because we get careless. So we need we need to be aware of our words and then really reel it back. If if we're getting a lot of negative words, complaining words, we can if you're complaining, you can pray instead of yes. complaining. Just as we start to find that, just whip it over to adjust it, hijack it, turn it to a prayer, flip it to a prayer rather than a complaint. Now there are times when we do need to vent in a a healthy way. And then there comes a point is like, okay, venting over, <laughs> let's pray about it, which is so yeah. good. But one thing that I, that it's important because if we're, if we're attending to our words and our words are not releasing life creative power, we have to realize we're speaking from the abundance of our heart out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So what's in my heart, in my soulish realm, that is coming up. That's not life. And then we have to deal with those mindsets. And I know you're masterful at this. I'm just going to let you take it away. <laughs> well, I, you know, that's the thing. And I wouldn't say I'm masterful. I, I mean, just I'm intentional about working on it. Yeah. But, you know, I think we can all point to times when we oh, no. failed miserably and it's like, oh, I'm supposed to, it's like, okay, right. you know, miss, miss, yeah. I'm, okay. Trainer. Okay. Coach. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. And yeah. you know, and so it's, but that's humility, right. To realize yeah. any time I've ever said, I've got this, I realize oh. I don't, it's the pride before the right. fall. Mm -hmm. And so being humble enough to say, cause a lot of times we'll look at other people and say, Christians, a lot of times, you know, it's like, how could they do that? I can't believe right. them or whatever. We were very judgmental. We right. can be very mm -hmm. judgmental. Yeah. And, and it's like, well, wait a second. Uh, what, what if you were in that situation? What if you had, had the same experiences? And that's what, like for me with, even like with my husband and some of the things that we went through, I realized at some point I was like, but God, he's doing this and this and this and this. And God's like, yeah, well, you've done that. And I'm like, when have I done that? He says, when have you put something before me? Oh. When did you, when did you ignore me? When did you have an, you know, put work before me or right. somebody, what did you put him before right. you, before me? Right. I will right. have no other gods Idols. before me. Mm -hmm. Idols. Right. And it's like, oh, wow. When have you been judgmental? Mm -hmm. You know, when have you done this? And it's like, again, from that heart, you talk about, mm -hmm. we get to look inside and say, hey, mm -hmm. wait a second, be self-aware enough mm -hmm. and honest with ourselves, I think yeah. is honesty is really important yeah. to be yeah. honest with ourselves, not to be defensive, not to blame others, to justify, mm -hmm. to deny yeah. what's happening, but to really be courageous in looking. Mm -hmm. And that is love, right? Is loving yeah. to look inside and say, Hey, wait a second, maybe there's something that I need to change. Yeah. You know, I, I talk a lot with women who are married, who have been struggling in marriages. I, mm -hmm. I guess because of my own experience, I, right. I've had a lot of women that have come and asked for input and advice or one event, you know, and, I, uh, I said to them, I said, look, you know, there's always two in the dance, right? There's two people dancing. I said, if you are physically on a dance floor mm -hmm. and you are dancing with someone mm -hmm. and you change the dance, like you stop dancing, mm -hmm. only a few things can happen from that point. Either they're going to drag you around the floor, right? they're going to stop, find mm -hmm. another partner, mm -hmm. or they're going to make adjustments. Yeah. That's that good. are going to work for. That's so good. change the dance. Mm -hmm. Don't try to change the other person. Mm -hmm. Don't try to force them and control them or give them ultimatums right. or rush their process. Mm -hmm. Change the dance, which means I get to change. It's be the change you want to see in the world. Right. Right. I get to change, you know? And so mm -hmm. first of all, it's, I think it, it requires awareness. Mm -hmm. Again, that honesty. Right. And bringing that, because you mentioned about like, sometimes we do need to vent. Right. The Bible does say we are to cast our burdens on him, exactly. not on the person next to us. And sometimes right. in community, we can carry the burden together, right. but we're, we're, it's basically we're both carrying it. I see it this way is so we're both carrying it to him. Right. Yes. I'm not expecting Absolutely. the person next to me to carry it for me. Oh no. Mm -mm. It's just like, you know, and I know that, but it's just like, that's what a lot of times though, isn't that what we do? Right. Oh, absolutely. it's like we dump on the next person and then 
you know, the, then we're wondering why they're stressed out or right. whatever. It's like, what's wrong with you? And, you know, and it's like, well, you just dumped all the, your stuff and then right. they got their stuff. Right. And so exactly. as anyone who is in a pastoral ministry, supportive role, mm -hmm. um, coach, mm -hmm. anybody in that environment needs yeah. to have that time to just like Jesus did, you know, go away and be alone with the father, be alone with the Holy spirit. Jesus gave us, you know, the Holy spirit, right. He sent it uh, yes. okay. uh, for us, sent him for us that we get to spend that time to be refilled. Yes. So that we can be what we need to be to support people or to operate again from that overflow. Exactly. And so that's how you also keep the overflow. Yes. Because the thing is, you've got to reconnect with the source that keeps on filling your glass from the bottom up so that you can overflow when you when you kind of are giving out all the time and you're not having that reconnection time. The flow is stymied or, or stopped or reduces. And then we wonder what happened. And this is why we burn out. And this yeah. is why making like work an idol, ministry an idol, Anything else in idol is so bad for us because we disconnect from the real source and kind of look at something else as a source rather than a conduit through which God can move until he's moving somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. And right. And so that's that, that is really uh, that's critical uh, for and us. And that's why we also don't want to see anyone else as the source yeah. of our needs getting met. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm counting on my husband or my friend mm -hmm. to be the one that makes me happy right? or to be the one that makes me feel secure or valuable or worthy or whatever, fill in the blank. Right. Then we're going to be disappointed we will. because that's actually not their drain job. Them. Right. And we're, we're going to drain them. Putting them, putting them in a God with a God level weight that's pulling on them. We, we may not be realizing we're doing it. And ultimately, we will not get our needs and we'll drain them as well. So this is a very, uh, it's a very unhealthy dynamic. And yeah. uh, we need to be to be weaned and disengaged and really look to the Lord, not in a religious way, but just in a practical, ongoing, I am the source of life. Why are you looking for life somewhere else, right? Although mm -hmm. there's many conduits, but a conduit, you know, my water pipe is not the water. As not yes. this, it's it may be a place the water flows through until the taps turn out, and I there's another tap, or maybe there's water directly, but it is we, we're confusing the conduit with the source. That's and we so need good. To be very careful. We need yeah. To be very careful. Yeah. I love that analogy. Yeah. I'm borrowing it. Oh, please run, run, and and elaborate, and then come back to me so I can do it better. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> what else do you want to share about the creative potential of words, different arenas in life? What else is stirring inside, or if there's something else, just take it away. <laughs> well, I think I think coming back to the speaking life, practically speaking, some of the words that we don't realize are destructive and or limiting are things like words like have to, mm. you know, I, I gotta, I gotta do this meeting. I got, have all these things. I have to go here. I have to go to the store. I have to go meet so-and-so. And it's so subtle and it's something that we use a lot. You mm -hmm. hear it a lot. Yeah. And really when we're saying have to, right. We're basically saying there is an external force, not necessarily God we're talking about, but it's like that external force. It might be work. It might be obligations and commitments that I've made, but it's an external force that's forcing me to do something versus a choice. And so I always encourage clients to change their words and change have to, to get to. Yeah. I get exactly. to. So now that, so now that commitment, cause this, this occurred to me at one point, I woke up and, and I'm like, oh, I got all these meetings. I got to do this, I got to do that. And it occurred to me, I'm like, Nicole, you booked your schedule. You <laughs> were the one that put all these meetings in, in into today. And so it just was like this light bulb that mm -hmm. went off for me. And I went, oh my gosh, I get to do this. I chose yeah. to do this. Right. So rather than have to choose to get to, mm -hmm. right? The other word that we use a lot is want. And it's interesting because want is 
it, we use it like, I want this, I want that. I want to create this. I want to accomplish that. Mm-hmm. I want to go here. Mm-hmm. And yet when we think about the, what want is, it's actually implying that there is a lack. Oh, so it's good. like, I, I want <laughs> for nothing, right? We hear that, right? I want for nothing. What does that mean? I, I lack, lack for nothing. Exactly. And so rather than want, I looked it up uh, at one point and, you know, it's that lack. And mm-hmm. the alternative to that is I desire. Desire is I'm excited exactly. for. Right? Exactly. So I God desire desires. to go here. I, I desire to, to meet with Catherine today and have an amazing conversation. It's different than I want to meet with Catherine or I want to go here. It's like I d- I'm actually excited for. I choose to. I get to. I desire to do that. And so there's some subtle words, try, maybe, possibly, all of those things. A lot of those are, if we even just notice how they feel, mm-hmm. they're, they're weak words. Yeah. And so I think it's important because if we realize that we are creative and we are able to create our, our world through yeah. our words yeah. and our reality through our words yeah. is to use words that have the strength and the power. I mean, the other thing I wanted to talk about, or, you know, that's on my been on my heart is authority. So we have authority in Christ Jesus. Jesus said, I have given you authority over all power of the enemy. So. All, all. Okay. All means all. Okay. All this means all. Question, right. Yes. All the power, not all except it says all. Yes. I just had to yes. say that. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. And I, and I, and I love that because that's the thing is we go, yeah, but here, but there. And, and I find and this was a shift for me because I used to pray and I would say, God, can you do this? And can you do that? And, and it's like, hey, well, wait a second. But if he that gave is- me the authority, he yeah. gave us all the authority. He said, go make disciples of all nations, mm-hmm. you know, dominion over all the earth. Mm-hmm. That's not over each other. That's over the earth collectively as humanity. Yes. So he gave us that authority Mm-hmm. then why am I asking him mm-hmm. to do it Right. when he said, I, I live in you. And so it just shifted at one point. It was like 2020. Uh, it was, uh, I think it was like April or, or May or something like that. I'm, I'm journaling my time with Lord and, and it dawned on me that, wait a second, if Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the father, and I am seated in heavenly places in Christ and Christ is in me, then where am I? And wow, if I'm at the right hand of the father in Christ Jesus, and he's given me the authority over all power of the enemy, then I'd pray a lot different. Oh, and so yeah. now I it's like, believed it, right? So yeah. This is where yeah. we're unbelieving believers. Right. We're getting we're getting we're getting nabbed on our unbelief because Jesus didn't stutter with any of this. Right. He was very, you know, very risky, you know, like here it all is, gang, have at it. And you might use it for evil because I did give you a free choice. Okay, but you can use it for life. You can be my sons and daughters, and I'm in you bringing to the place of you resonating with me that you use this explosive power that is unlimited with the might, with the spiritual authority to back up the right to use it in my name because you're my son and my daughter, because you're Mm -hmm. my younger sibling, all of that, because I'm married to you with all the mystery of all that, that's, that's yours. Yes. Use it. The more you pull upon that, the happier I get, right? And the more yeah. life you're bringing, you're operating in and releasing and fulfilling the reason why I actually sent you to planet Earth, the purposes for which you were born. Yeah. So, yeah. Sorry. It's so okay. good. Yeah. Well, and that's just it, right? So we would pray a whole lot differently. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so when you think about how Jesus would, you know, people would have like a, a spirit, you know, and, and that would torment them. And he just, he didn't have a long discussion with them and 
find out all about them and why, where this came from and when this came from. He just said, leave, right? Mm -hmm. Get out. And, and so I just was like, well, what if I, so you try to, you know, try it on for size, right? Like, you know, like test it out and going like, okay, God, just like the disciples going out two by two. So there Mm -hmm. is a principle in there about two by two. You're not going by yourself, but we have the Holy spirit in us Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who's with us all the time. And so there are times where I've been places and I'm just like, yeah, no out. Right. In my own house, right. In my own, in my own mind, in my own heart, you know, where there's a spirit of doubt or a spirit of poverty or a spirit of suspicion and jealousy Mm -hmm. or envy or pride or all the things. And it's literally, it's like, you start, you know, you just like get out. And it's interesting because I actually have done that and it's, and heard the, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, and it's like, no, just yeah. out, yeah. get out, yeah. you know, in the name of up. Jesus, not because yeah. of who I am, but because of who right. Jesus is and of he course. lives in me. And so as I continue to do that, it's like out, I have authority to kick you out yeah. and to tell you never to come back. And exactly. so it's like, you're out. And then pray the hedge of protection and all right. the, you know. And, 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 and work on yeah. the inner mess that may have given it license or yes. whatever. Yes, seal all, the doors, seal that. the gates. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. All of that. It's good. And that, that's amazing. It's a very, and and the thing is that we're, we're not, we're looking peripherally. It's not like we're looking for a demon under every, or a spirit or whatever we're going to call no. it everywhere. But we'll bump into things and it can be very, very insidious. Yes. It can broadside you. And one of the ways that we know, ask me how I know, is when you start seeing the what what are you speaking? What's the language? And what's the inner climate that's yes. going on? So which means we have to be alert. We do need to be sober, not paranoid, not afraid, but alert. Yes. What is going on? What is going so alert to attentive to our words, which mirrors what's going on inside and the climate inside that's actually producing that. So we, we operate yeah. in self-control because the bottom line, we may not have a great climate, but we can actually uh, rein in and just have self-control. We don't have to spew at everything that's going in there, but we also need to deal with what's going in there. So we get yeah. we get it coming and going. And as mature sons and daughters, I mean, if Jesus was tempted in every way as we were, but without sin, that means there was a lot going on inside that he wanted to spew out. As like, yeah, he, he just, let me pinch. No, I'm not going to pinch their head off, but I, it's feeling like I can, okay, I'm not going to do it, but all of that, uh, you know, and, and, and he had, he had to rein it in. He had to operate in the spirit that was of his father in the Holy spirit. He had to operate like that. And he was the forerunner as a human being, fully human, fully God to operate in that so that he fulfilled that. And then is in us with the spirit to do the same. Yeah. And he didn't, he didn't create disclaimers. Okay. We are as Christ in this world, not Christ. Yeah. We're not confused, but we are as Christ. So we can be, uh, we are championed by the one who is the champion Amen. to, 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 yeah. to conform us into champions, right? Yeah. Just like our elder brother. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and it, like you said, it's not like we go around looking for it, but it'll show up. And for me, what I noticed, and even those ones that I use as example, those are all ones that I noticed in myself. And I'm like, okay, is this something that I, is this me, right? Mm -hmm. Is this something that I've taken on? I may have allowed access to it, but is it me? Is it my thinking? Right. Or is it something that it's like, no, I've already, I, I am choosing otherwise and it's still there. Mm -hmm. And so Mm -hmm. if I'm choosing this and I'm still feeling like this, tormenting from this, right. you know, overwhelming. It's like, what is that about? Right. So yes, I need to look at how did I let that in? Where is that coming from? Where are the access mm-hmm. points? Mm-hmm. And to recognize that I can get rid of that. I mean, the other day I actually had somebody show up at my door, three men, and um, they were inviting me to a church mm-hmm. and that was teaching something other than the Bible. I'll just leave it there. And, um, I could feel it. Right. And I'm like, nope, not today. Right. So I'm just, I'm going to stay with the, I'm going to stay with, I just said politely. And, you know, I just said, not interested. Thank you. I'm going to stick with the Holy spirit and the, and the word of God and the truth of God. And, uh, but I was like, whatever this is, is not it. Nope. 
it's not coming to my house. Exactly. So it's, good. It's, it's got to be that like that simple. And yeah. sometimes it's hard. We don't recognize it. We mm-hmm. don't recognize it. And then we wonder, we wonder why we're, you know, we're, it's almost like there's blocks or there's barriers right. and so forth. And so, well, yeah. My, so it's, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's very powerful. It's not weird and woo woo because you know what? I mean, how many times like people in a secular space, it says there's something about that person I just don't like. Wow. Could be because of your own stuff. There is right. that. Right. Um, but it could be because there's something going on and you just, we, we are sensitive to that. Right. So it's just right. recognizing being sensitive of the, yeah. of the, the spiritual world. Now, one of the things That's you talk true. about is like human behavior and just recognizing what is human behavior mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. what is, you know, uh, actually I was reading a book, a really good book by, um, I'm just starting to get into it. Uh, Watchman Nee called the spiritual man. Nice. And he talks about the distinction between the spirit, soul, and body mm-hmm. and how the soul being the mind, will, and the emotions is very like self conscious, mm-hmm. whereas the spirit is the God conscious. And then the mm-hmm. body is more like the physical Mm-hmm. material consciousness. Right. And so often we are operating from that place of self consciousness and self desire and self, you know, those are our behaviors, right. About mm-hmm. how we operate, mm-hmm. but it's only through the spirit. I found mm-hmm. that fascinating. The way he explained it is it's only through the spirit that we actually connect to God. And so we need to, right. we need to surrender God that is spirit because yes. God is spirit. Yes. And then that and flows so in we, spirit, soul, and spirit. body, yeah. but it mm-hmm. it flows in that order. And so mm-hmm. it's just, it's, you know, it's just recognizing that, but uh, yeah, anyway, I love this yeah. stuff. So this is so good. And, you know, and, and none of this is about striving. None of this is about feeling condemned or it's, it's about operating in such a way that is worthy of who we are. The reason why, the reason why God is 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 create creates from you know imperfection and only creates good is because that's all that's in Him, and so we have to realize that you know we were born in a fallen world and we learned all sorts of fallen ways of being, and 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 just crazy stuff and 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 then stuff happens and we get harmed and then we make it mean things all of those things. So in this um, operating and co-laboring with God, it, it's a partnership. It's an invitation to come up higher, not because we're not good. We're not good. It's because we are good. And because we are so good in who we are and who we've been made in the image and likeness of God, our perfect spirit beings, that God is saying, yeah, uh, yeah, that right there is not worthy of you. Let's bring that up. Not because you're bad, but because you're good. You're too good to stay at that level. This is what it means to be conformed into the image of Christ. It doesn't take you from a bad because you're bad and now you're good. No, you've always been good, but you don't know it. You don't know the righteousness of God. So how you're manifesting in these fallen ways of being is fallen and it's not worthy of you. But you're loved. He's not going to love you anymore when you get it right um, he's not going to value you anymore. Your value, uh, your uh, the fact that you're loved and accepted, he will not love you anymore. He will not accept you anymore. You're not going to get any more brownie points. There's not, you know, all these different things. We're not earning and striving. Earning and striving is the language of orphans. Yes. But but partnering with God, now God is a rewarder. Of course he is. Um, but it's not, it's not, He's a rewarder because there's reward in doing things him his way. The reward comes in and of itself. Yes. And so we're manifesting the goodness and the reward is a byproduct of good things happening. It's a consequence. When I do stupid, stu- I get stupid results. When I do wise, I get wise, good, life-giving results that reverberate way beyond the difficulties of my choice of having to say no to myself. Okay. No to it, to a part of myself that was maybe infantile or selfish or whatever. Um, They go way beyond that. And so we get to operate like that. We get to operate in self-control and then we get to, and it becomes more and more naturally supernatural. Yeah, It becomes a habit. And so it gets easier, but it will always be a thing, but it's not, doesn't have to be a striving. 
It's like, he loves us in our mess because we're the thing that matters, right? Yes. He's more interested in his relationship with us or our relationship with him, I should say, and who we, who we become in him and in Christ Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that then, then all the things that we can do. And I think that we can get very disillusioned into thinking that the good works is yeah. what makes the difference. And that he, we, even when we say you have a plan and you got as a plan and a purpose for your life. And it's like, right. Oh, I gotta, I gotta make this purpose happen. I gotta, yeah. I gotta strive to do it. It's right. interesting that you mentioned about rest because the uh, scripture that God gave me at the end of last year was be still mm. and know that I am God. Mm. And yeah. And then at the same time, my word for 2024 is now. And those kind of sound like they're a dichotomy, right? There's a paradox there, paradox, yeah. but, but it's, it's, um, but it's, it's not actually, because when we do things in the way that he has designed it, it's not like, it's like the, if then, right. When you, or when you do this, then you will prosper. Mm-hmm. And he's not, he's not saying like, when you do all these good things, it's the principle. I think we get stuck on practices right. versus the principle of it. He's going, if you plant good seed in good soil mm-hmm. by the river mm-hmm. and you get the, the, the nourishment from, for us, it's, you know, Jesus is the living water, right? And you get mm-hmm. that nourishment, it, you're going to flourish. Yes. That's, yes. that's how it works. Yeah, right. It's a very pr- practical. It's, it's yes, it's very practical. It's it's that's a principle versus the practice of, oh, so I plant my tree here and I do this and do that and all the things. It's really he, he doesn't, what kind of tree should it be? And all you know, we get all into that. Right. It's not it's not it's not actually about that at all. He cares about our hearts, he cares about yeah. the principle of when I say principle, meaning like the the things that don't change the unchanging right. things yes. right yes. this yes. is how his his universe operates this is what how he's created it and i remember years ago i was saying to i was in my time with the lord i was like okay i'll you know take the sabbath because you want me to take the sabbath and um and it was like i mean i think he talks to all of us the way we need to be spoken to sure, and so exactly. for my personality he's like very loving, also very direct. And so he's like, um, I don't need you to take the Sabbath. Let's be clear. I don't need the Sabbath. I'm fine. You need the Sabbath. (laughs) Yes. And that was a, it was a revelation for me, but it also, as I thought about and reflected on all the commandments Mm -hmm. is that they aren't because it's, you know, something that he thought was a good idea. And he just said, Hey, I'm going to, like a parent goes, because I said so, you know, like right, this. Right, right. He's saying is when you do these, when you, when you, you know, honor my commandments, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you will, you will prosper. It'll, you'll do well. Exactly. Exactly. When you don't, it's not going to go well mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. there are principles at play. So there's laws of nature, whatever. Not that he's a punisher. He's not a punisher. It's just like, he doesn't right. need, I mean, he doesn't really need to punish us. The act that, the disobedience, the thing right. that we do has a cause and effect. Sin and has its own punishment. It has its sin has its own punishment. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. so it's like, you know, so that just shifted for me because even worship, right? I remember my husband one time said, um, well, I don't understand why God would would uh would need us. What kind of God needs us to worship him? Like, is he insecure? Does he need that? And I, I said, love that. That's in my book. That's in my mark by love. I write, so I'm tracking with your, yeah. Your, keep going. Yes. And he's I love like, it. I no. I said, no, no, no. He doesn't need us to worship. Mm-hmm. But when we worship yeah. and align ourselves with him, I mean, it's so amazing. It's, it's hard to, des- it's, it's life. It's, it's hard to describe exactly. in words yeah. what that is. Yeah is like and what that what that it does transform you we it's need to see this god yeah. as so good and so big and experiencing it tangibly and who That's we are in him that it expands us absolutely <sighs> absolutely That's what it it's for us because we're looking at him and as we look at him we're transfigured i mean yes. it's, it's 
And it's this ongoing life giving flow where he gets bigger, we get bigger, he gets bigger in our mind because he occupies all the space. But being in him, we are huge. We are giants in him because that's who we made us. Of course, of course we are because we look like him in our flavor. Right. So that's we right. have to be. So that's beautiful. So yeah. He's not so an insecure good. fluff and buff me God. You yeah. know, he doesn't really doesn't need it. But he wants it. He desires it because he has no lack. I said, I, I did that thing. I, I changed my word. <laughs> he desires it because he loves his kids. And yeah. he wants us to experience all the fullness and all the authority and all the power and all the good things that he has for us. And being partnered with him in not only, you know, when, when, when we are transformed, we literally partner with him to re release all of creation from its bondage. Amen. So it's a little bit of the butterfly effect, right? So yes. it's amazing with that. Yeah. yeah. And all creation waits, right? Yeah. For the groans. sons. Right. Yeah. Yes. They grow. It groans. Right. For us. Right. Wake to up, be, wake up. To be revealed, to yeah. be like, oh my goodness, this is who I am. This is who we are. And it's like, oh. And, and even so, inanimate so. creation um, is waiting for the sons and daughters of God to wake up because I'm here to serve you. Mm -hmm. I was created. I find my fulfillment in serving the sons and daughters of God. Money was made as a servant. Okay. What, how are we define yeah. that? It's kind of a fictional, I mean, you know, it's not a real thing, but it's a, I don't know how you define it, but the maybe, concept of it. Yeah. It's a concept, yeah. right. Um, it's, it's created to serve. Everything is created. He richly has given us all things to enjoy. So all of these things are waiting for someone who knows who they are, who's operating in union with this gorgeous God who is love, who is pure, who is light, who is life, who is truth, who is all those things. And we're looking just like him. And he can, well, what can I do through that son and daughter and bless them along the way? Right. That's right. Yeah, that's amazing. so good. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. good. Wow. 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 So any, anything else that's coming up for you? No, I just appreciate you, uh, Catherine. And I appreciate uh, your passion and, you know, love for the Lord and how you articulate it through your own, you know, personality and style. And I just, I love it. And I love these conversations. And I think that so we need these conversations to happen need we desire these conversations we right. are blessed when we have these conversations right. um and we create when we have these conversations i think the world is uh and i will use this word intentionally in need of yes it is right oh, in that, need desperate, of desperate need. yes desperate yes. need of mm -hmm. more love and grace and specifically in, in the word of God being preached and, you know, because of what it creates and it's not religion and it's not legalism and pharisaical, mm -hmm. what, however you want to call it, uh, mm -hmm. teaching It is because God is love and we can only either operate and we are only either operating from a place of love or fear at any given moment in time, yeah. meaning that we can be, at one point, you know, in love and operating that. And then the next mo moment we can be in fear and we can be. So the Bible talks about, you know, not being double minded. And a lot of us, and I've experienced this myself, and it's like this continual self-awareness around how can I be single minded? I need to spend time with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And when I don't, I start to see mm -hmm. myself wander off, right? And start some of the, the weeds start coming in. But it's like mm -hmm. to be very intentional about being single-minded. We can create incredible, amazing things. But if we're part of the time in agreement with the Lord and part of the time we're in agreement with the enemy, it's like I use the analogy. It's like one foot on the gas pedal, one foot on the brake pedal. Exactly. And then we wonder why things are not flowing. We wonder why we're not moving forward in the way that we think we should based on the efforts. It's because out of our mouth, we are speaking two separate things and they're, it's like they're canceling each other. It's creating confusion. 
Exactly. And so, you know, we're that tripping over is, themselves. Yes. we're tripping okay. over. And so it's like yeah. love, fear, love, fear. And there's so much mm-hmm. of this going on. And I mm-hmm. say fear, meaning anger and anything lack. So it's like abundance, lack, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, so exactly. you're either coming from a place of abundance or you're coming from a place of lack. And I've said this in videos and shared this. And it's funny, it's not, it's not overly popular, but uh, I think it is a principle is that and a, and a, and a, a truth is that a lot of us are looking and seeking abundance. Mm-hmm. Let's use the marketplace, seeking abundance and wealth and prosperity mm-hmm. in the marketplace, but doing it, trying to get there through scarcity. Yeah, I need totally. to get more clients. Good. I need to get more business. I need to get more followers. Right. Oh, wow. I need to, I need to get more money. I need to, I need to make more money to make more sales, lead generation, scarcity, scarcity. Uh, I need to put more appointments and cram my schedule with more and more and more and more and more. And it's, it's never going to lead to abundance when you do that. So that's where the moving from striving Mm -hmm. to rest, to restfulness, Mm -hmm. to say, okay, God, like, today. What do I need to be focused on today, this week, this month, Mm -hmm. and be present and and aware Mm -hmm. of him enough and listening, being a commune, uh, communing with him Mm -hmm. to hear when he makes the changes. I mean, we look at biblical examples, lots of the biblical examples go here. Okay, now go here and go here, right? I'll tell you on the way, right? Which means we need to cultivate this relationship so we can hear. Because the bottom line is this is cultivation and you practice and you get better and better and better at it. Yes. And I, and this, yes. this business, if I can't hear whatever, no, 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 that's, I'm sorry, that's caca. I love you, but it's caca. God didn't give you deficiency, but there may be some things that you need yeah. to develop, may some things that need to be healed, but yeah. you can do this. You're a son, you're a daughter by a God who's relational. That means he wants communication. You have no relationship, but there's no communication. So anyway, sorry. And there may be things blocking it. Yeah, absolutely. There may be things blocking it. There may be some underdeveloped. You may not recognize. I've had people who have said to me about, I think God said I should do this. And I, and everything in my spirit's going, no, I don't think that's, uh, I don't think God told you to, to leave your husband. I, 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 I challenge that, right? Yeah. Because he's not going to contradict his word. And I'm not saying that there's somebody out there, God might, but see, the thing is, it's not a formula. Right. You've got to listen. We've got whatever God tells you to do, do that. But just make sure that you're hearing from God. Exactly. And you're not being deceived in that. And what I what I've noticed, like talking about hearing from God, and I'm sure you could do a whole and probably have done seminars on this. But being able to how do you hear from God is I notice that when the when the enemy talks to me, Mm -hmm. it is about it has to be done now. It's like fear of missing out rushing, hurrying now, now there's an intensity to it. Like, Oh, you got to do it. That's that. There's pressure to it versus when God speaks to me, it's there's, there's a, there's a, it carries a level of peace and grace to it that cannot be counterfeited. Wait, yes. Wait. Cause sometimes and there's a simplicity to it. Yeah. Yes. yes. There's, a, there's not confusion. Mm-hmm. And it's oftentimes it's not what I was planning to do. Right. It's mm-hmm. not feeding my, when I was talking uh, about earlier, it's not feeding myself, right. Mm-hmm. My mind, will and emotions. Mm-hmm. It is speaking to me from a spiritual standpoint and it's taking me higher. It's taking me raising that standard mm-hmm. as opposed to being down here and going, yeah, I need to make stuff happen. I can't wait for, Others, you know, I need to do something. And it's like any time I've ever done that, it has not gone well. But God has grace over all of it. So if we do it, you know, he still has lots of mistakes. Let's be clear. Yes. Yes. All of these. I will probably speak for you too, Nicole, too. I I feel like I that we have fouled this up a plenty. Um, but oh, yes. we all can do better. So no condemnation. It's not alive, uh, not allowed. That's an antichrist statement to be condemned because there's no con- condemnation in Christ. But yes. um, but we all can come up higher. Yes. So yeah, we need to forgive ourselves when we have goofs. You know, I'm just teaching what I, you know, and sharing what I'm all still learning and continuing to learn. God is showing me. And I think that's what he is speaking to all of us. And when I say we, he's speaking to all of us. He's speaking to the body of Christ because Um, you know, he's teaching us, Mm -hmm. reminding us of who we are, 
teaching us how to operate in the authority that we have Mm -hmm. to recognize that. And I believe he's also training us up in this lifetime to reign and rule for a thousand years. And so he's like, I need to, I need you to develop some skills. I need you to develop some, some, have some experience around Mm -hmm. this, just like the parable of the talents. I think it's fascinating that, you know, use the analogy of these servants being given some talent, some money, um, and, and being, you know, told to invest that. And when they come back and they, the ones that multiply it, he said, very interestingly, well done. Now you will be, uh, you will govern over 10 cities, five cities, right? You're okay. Wait a second here. Let's literally imagine that for a moment that a servant now is governing over cities, right? Governing wow. over regions, right? Wow. There, you know, it, it, that's a, that's a big deal. That and so a- what is he teaching us in that? He didn't just say, well done, you know, keep the money and go buy yourself a, you know, make it build a house. Right. He actually gave them more responsibility and governance. Mm-hmm. And so I, I do believe that we are being trained up. And so sometimes most times, all times, we have to go through some stuff, right? To be, when I, you don't wish for it. You don't wish for the problems, but we got to go through it. Cause I, I don't know about you, Catherine, but I, Listen, this is for grownups. Yes. I, I'm like, Lord, why do I have to learn this all firsthand? Can I not read it in a book? Yeah. And he's like, yeah, well, it's not the same. So I, I mean, not to say that we have to make the same foolish mistakes okay. if, you know, I mean, over and over again or whatever, but there right. is a way that he's going to be like, I'm going to allow you to walk through them. I'm not going to send you, but I'm going to allow you. I'm going to use yeah. this mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. as a, as an opportunity. And I'm going to be with you. Troubles mm-hmm. will come, but I will always be with you. I'm going to walk through this and you're going to learn so many things and you're, and I'm taking you higher. You're going to, I'm going to teach you. I'm going to grow your, you know, heart muscles. I'm going to grow right. your ability, your mind and your intellect right. and your experience right. and your perspective, mm-hmm. your wisdom. I'm going to mm-hmm. do that through life experience. And so, okay. you know, what was meant for our harm, God says, oh, I'm going to turn it for okay. good. Working I'm going to turn it for good. And that goes, whether it's in business, whether that goes, I mean, it's every area of life, you mm-hmm. know? And so, when we're going through things, I used to say like, why me? Why me? And God's like, well, why not? And I'm with you. Tr- do you trust me? I remember him saying, you know, a, a significant point in my life where I was like, I felt like I lost everything. Mm. And by all worldly standards, I had. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, God. and It's just me and him, you know, and he says, do you trust me? And I said, I trust you. And he goes, do you trust me? Mm -hmm. Do you trust me to provide? Come away with me and rest. So good. And I'm like, yeah, but I still got to do da, da, da. Nobody's coming to, you know, cover my bills or nobody's coming to help me and whatever. And it's like, do you trust me? Do you trust me as your source? And your mm-hmm. strength, you say it, but do you trust me? It's one thing to say, I trust you, God, when everything's going well. But when everything falls apart and literally I lost my parents, lost my husband, my home, my finances, wow. my health was a mess, wow. obviously with all the stress and everything like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was like, I'm literally going, wow, okay. Like I got nothing. And yet at the same time, I had everything. God's like, I am your source. I am all sufficient. Mm. It's you and me. And you are not alone. And you have everything you need. Wow. And now let's build from that. Wow. You know, so. And he has. You've got the fruit to show it. It's beautiful. Wow. Oh, Nicole, I can't believe we're at the top of the hour. How can people find you? Well, I have my podcast, like you mentioned, and my coaching and all of that is at leadersoftransformation.com. And they can find me there. And of course, I'm all on social and everything. And we're in the process right now. I honestly don't know when it's going to launch because I'm just like, Lord, it's on your timing, not my timing. Um, 
And uh, we're building a platform for like a course platform that is going to go through the the four areas of, of prosperity, calling the meridians, prosperity, holistic prosperity. So personal, relational, economic, and influential. So dealing with the being, who am I being and how am I showing up and getting that right? And then how do I relate and love on uh, love one another? And then the economic is, of course, the the you know the the purpose and the assignment that we have here on earth to to partner with God and what He's doing, and then the influence is how to advance the kingdom. So I'm working on that, and it's a lot. It's like taking all of my life experience and putting it, and with obviously all wow. of the things that God has taught me through that, and putting it into a platform. So it's it's t- it's it's taken a minute to put it together. Um, so, but that's going to be coming. And so, uh, if people are interested in being, uh, informed about that, they can join the email list and you'll be the first to know when it comes out. That is so amazing. Oh my goodness. This has been awesome. Thank Thank you, you. Nicole. It's been so good. So good. We'll have to do it again. I could see all these other topics, uh, to talk about. So it's so much fun. Yeah. Yeah, It's wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, everybody like share all the stuff and Go find her podcast and subscribe, sign up on her email list, all the things. Uh, and uh, you're going to be incredibly impacted by everything that Nicole is carrying and just who she is as a gift. Mm-hmm. And you're a gift to me. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you. And likewise, Catherine, I really appreciate you. And uh, I love our conversations. We need to do this more often. We get to do this. More often. We get to do this more often. Yay. Yeah, so I, love good. I love it. God bless you. All right. Well, Everybody, uh, like and share, do all the stuff. Everybody have a wonderful day. Thank you, Nicole. You have a great day as well. Love you. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Perspectives with Catherine Toon. For additional information and resources, please visit catherinetoon.com.